you sewer. Now in the last episode we took on the dragon and had a blast fighting it. And you guys all helped out, which is awesome. And in the last few episodes of Qantas, I've been working on a storage system, autocraft thing, all on open computers. But I thought, hey, why don't I pull some of that open computer stuff into Beyond and let you guys play on it? So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to spend a little bit of time and make up a bit of a mini game using open computers. So let's get started. So before we get too far into what we're actually doing, I thought I'd give you a bit of an overview on what's been, what's changed. As you can see, we've spent quite a bit of time working on the base and getting the, what I'm now calling the Sea Lab, up. And you can see at night time, it looks really quite cool. And the last time you saw it, of course, we just had the dome in the middle. And we've been busy since. So the pink house is still here, but we now enter via the pink house. Head down here. And we've got the three large little pathway that goes all the way down here. And as you can see, the dome hasn't really changed. We've got a nice little walkway um, up the side here. And we've got a walkway just like we come in from this side on the other side as well. But if we go down here, probably the coolest thing we've done is we've actually spent bit more time and put some more domes in. So we've got a dome here, a dome over here, a dome over there, a dome over here, one there, and one there. Now we haven't filled all these up, uh, but what we have actually done is over here we have a little bit of blood magic. Not planning on doing a lot of episodes on here of building stuff up. Uh, let me show you the odd little bit. Most of it is just for fun play, because that's what you do on this server. We have fun! So we've got the blood magic over here. We'll head over this way. Uh, over in here we've got the Batania. And a lot of these domes are still a work in progress. Over here we've set up very large smeltery for the purpose of making smeltery brick because if you're not aware put cobblestone into a smeltery and put it into a casting table with um, the ingot cast and you'll get back seed bricks and over here we've got a bit of a wood set up and the other domes that we've got left are all empty there's nothing in them. This is the storage area. It's not much. Uh, it's just a big area. It's really just to keep all the stuff in so we don't clutter up the really nice and stairs. Uh, one of the cool things I've found is in the last few games I've set up a storage scanner and it hasn't done a lot. But we can actually open up a storage scanner now and set it up to autocraft. Which is cool. Not like AE. Without needing to have all the AE set up to go with it. Okay, yeah, no autocrafting, no exports in that. But you get the point. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and find a little planes area or something that's nice and big so we can build a games area in it. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll do we'll set up the basics of the minigame. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this. Okay, so I've been scouting around quite a bit. It's taking a very long time to, to find a spot, but I think I've got a perfect spot. It hasn't got many claims around because I don't want to interfere with other people's areas. They may want to expand out further. There are some claims around the area, but hopefully not too many. And they don't need to expand out this far. And I just claim the piece that I'm here and I'll declaim a lot of it once we've built what we want. But I'm not entirely sure what we're going to build and how it's going to look. I have an idea on my head and I'm just going to set it up. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to head back to the base, which is going to take a long walk again, um, and grab some stuff so we can start building this, because I don't actually have a lot on me, um, and I will come back when, when I've actually built something up. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed the time lapse. Um, I'm sure you can guess what this is by now, if it's actually quite disorientating in here, uh, at free high. Um, if you didn't pick it up, we're looking at one of the original arcade games, very, very famous, 
game. And of course, hopefully by now you've guessed it. It's probably in the... T I think I've probably named the title of this episode, so it's probably pretty obvious what it actually is. But of course, this is the maze from... Um, that wasn't very helpful. From Pac-Man. <laughs> and as you can see, it is... Go higher up. Okay, let's just go up here and we'll see if we can get it. So there you go. So that's the this is the maze from Pac-Man. Normally, of course, it would be a little bit bigger with the, the green spots are things that have changed from the original Pac-Man game. Normally in the middle you have where the ghosts start, and you would normally have the two side pieces, as in the two side pieces there and there, which would be where you can go and you end up on the other side but overall i have tried to make it so that it looks similar to the original map so as i've just said i'm going to do a little bit more in here because this isn't really pac-man this is just the maze from pac-man what i want to do is i want to play with one of the other blocks in open computers which could make this really quite cool um, in fact there's a few of them i'd like to play with so I'm going to jump back over to the base and we'll have a look at how to set these things up and I will be back in a moment. Okay, so I've gone through the rabbit hole that is IC2 to make the pieces we need for open computers. Uh, I've forgotten that Tech Reborn changes the recipe to require iron fence, which you can only make using IC2. Not great. But we got there in the end, and I've got everything up and running. There's two blocks I was thinking about using in this um, in this mini game. One is the hologram projector. The tier one only gives you one colour, as shown here, colour depth from monochrome. Uh, whereas the tier 2 gives you free colours. I'm not, I don't think we need free colours, I'm not planning on using it for too much, and if we do, then we can always make another one to do that. So what I'm thinking though, is I'll make a tier 1, now they're not too hard to make, they just require some PCBs, uh, a diamond chip, so we can go into here, we just need the obsidian, otherwise it's not too difficult. Go into here, make one of these. And I'm also thinking about using the motion sensors. I just explain here what they do. Uh, yeah, so you can detect the movement of nearby living entities. So basically, we can see where people are on the map. So let's make one of those as well. What we'll do is take these over to here, where I've got them, got the open computer stuff, and we'll just drop this guy. Um, we'll just drop it down. I don't know about here for now. Should we connect, hopefully. And it does give off light, which is quite cool. So a really good way of testing things out. I haven't shown this before, but if you've got a new thing, just go into the lower, which you can run by itself, and you can tab complete. So we can go into here computer or component. I'm interested in component. We want to know how to use the hologram. So we look for holo. Or is it projector? No, it's not. Okay, it's not reading the projector from the... Oh, of course, I don't want to need. It needs to be connected at the top. Uh, yeah, we'll grab some cables, because I'm going to need some cables anyway, so let's make some of those up. Uh, do 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 cabling. They don't take very long to make, hopefully. Uh, we'll make four of them. That shouldn't be too much what we need. And we will take this out. And oh, we'll just place it here for now, I suppose. Like that. And then, of course, if we go into here. Program, there it is. To get the method to go back, we can set the rotation speed. So you can actually rotate. I haven't played with that. Um, as we got here, though, we've got a fill, type, copy, max depth. So you can see there's very different. There we go. So what we do? What I'm going to do though is I'm going to set this to a scale of 
drink. Now let's, uh, instead of doing that, let's uh, set something first. So I think it's fill. Uh, 1, comma, 1, 1, and 1. Which I believe is the X, the Y, the Z, and the color. Uh, if we come back out here, we should see. Oh, there it is. So you can see the little green dot here, which is the hologram. And because it's only one pixel, you can of course see that it's showing that. If we change this to be, let's say, 2. We should now see it somewhere is another dot around here. I am right next to it. So you can see that it's the second number is going out this way. All I'm planning on using it for is a single dot, uh, just to make our little the, the little dots that you collect up. Uh, so you'll notice that it's quite small, right? But what you can do is we can set the scale. So we can go set scale. Uh, need to have a dot there. Set. No. 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 You can change the colours. Set scale. So six is it big enough? Six may be a little big, or may not be valid. So let's make it maybe three. It may also be in the wall. Yeah. There, but we make it. We fill. Let's go twenty. What's that do? Is it up somewhere? Ah, there we go. It's a very large little block there. And what it's actually doing is the fill command will drop. It starts at the top and just drops right down the bottom. So it's actually filled up to the 20th item and then drops down. If we change the scale though back to 1, which is the standard, you can see the size there. So that's the normal size it would be when you start up. Uh, but of course we can set it to whatever size we want, we can set it to 6, there is actually a limit to the total size you can set it to. Um, set it to 100, okay, it doesn't error out which isn't helpful, uh, but that's about the same size, of it. it's about 4 blocks all around the projector, and I think it's about the same up. Um, oh dear. So that's the cool thing about those ones there, and of course we can draw little pictures on there and do all sorts of cool things. Uh, what we can also do, of course, is we're going to play around with the sensor. Uh, which, if we plug that into there, the sensor works a little bit differently. There's not a lot you can do inside the component. Sensor... Or is it motion? I think motion. Motion? Yeah, motion sensor. Uh, so you can get the address, the type, the sensitivity of it, uh, which is how quickly it'll, or what the, how much distance there needs to be for it to identify something. And that's all there actually is for the motion sensor. Because what it does, it, it sets up a trigger, or an event. It sets up an event which runs through. So if we go in and we set a can't use nano. Uh, let's go test for now. Local event require event event local a b c d equals event dot pull and I think it's time out and then type and I believe it's motion. We do that. Drop use control W. Run test. Yep. If we move around, it would help if I do something with those values. So I'll also go. Oops. We'll also print A, B, C, and D. For debugging, control S, control W. If we then go 
test and I move around a little bit as you can see it's picked up the motion rather cool uh, and there's actually more information like the negative 1.5 and there's more coordinates that are available uh, it's the event is actually the motion this is the ID of the motion sensor this is the coordinates um, relative to the motion sensor same with this one here there's also another coordinate and I think if I remember correctly there is a player just add those on there E and F and maybe G E, F and G save it and I'm not sure what's going on in the chat so we'll pull that back like that and yeah so there you go so there's your coordinates so it's relative to the, the motion sensor itself so one coordinate, two coordinates, three coordinates the player and then nothing else is returned so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to set up all this stuff here in the game area and I'll come back when it's set up and I've got an idea on how the program is going to work okay so managed to get all the holodrop projectors in there and as you can see just like you have in the Pac-Man game you would have the little dots you'd run around click them up uh, and you'd get points for them of course in this case here because we are using the highest possible scale what you're actually looking at here is as the single dot it's not actually when you're changing the scale it doesn't change the resolution it only changes the size of each dot now one of the other things that I was looking at doing in the previous clip as I mentioned about having using the scanner and my original plan was to have a top-down view and then you could see where the character was on the map as well as your score and other things and it looks like we have to change that because the scanner the motion sensor I thought which I thought would work really well has a small limitation in that it only triggers an event every half second so you can walk about three or four blocks in that time which means you have to do some magic to work out where things are and I thought that just that's a bit much really I also found out that it's got a limitation it, it must be line of sight and glass is not line of sight that's a pain so what I was thinking of doing was using the redstone event or well, the redstone blocks to do stuff so it's going to take a little more component than I thought but it does give me the opportunity to show you something so let me jump back to the base and I'll show you what I'm, I was planning on doing next so one of the other things you can do is you can make a, a, a redstone card which you can put into the computer itself and it will be able to read and set redstone signals but that only works if you've got one redstone thing we need to be able to read that whole area if we're going to put down some more redstone and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use possibly going to be conduits because Project Red has some issues with crashing uh, normal redstone won't work the way we want it to and I don't think Xnet's got support for redstone so it's going to have to be in there I hope I think and if you've got any ideas on how we can read the player data besides redstone it'd be great but at least we get to see how this works so what I was planning on using is these redstone IOs and making a few of these each side could be triggered as a different redstone signal and you, re you can read bundled input and we will also need to make because I don't want to make a hard drive for a new computer the EEPROM and what the EEPROM does is you've seen me craft in the past for the the lower stuff but you can actually flash these with your own small pieces of code so let's make one of these I don't want you to read some torch what was the chance of anything out of that let's make eight of those um, and where was the EEPROM I'll make one of those so that's all I really need for the crafting point of, uh, um, point of view to do this so what I'm going to do is just go back to the, the game area and I'll meet you there okay so before we get too far into this you can see this I've got two computers here uh, one is a advanced or a computer case tier 3 
and the other is a computer case a tier 2. Now this one here I was expecting would actually connect into this computer but because of the network cable connecting to this it treats this screen as just a secondary component to the computer and it also treats the computer that's connected here as another one plus the holographic projectors that are in here. Now you can also see that we've placed in the uh, redstone conduits as I said I'm not overly happy about using con uh, these conduits because they can be a bit laggy and a, a bit of a problem but it's not really another option that we can use at the moment if you've got any ideas please do leave a comment down below on how to do it but what we need to do to fix this problem because the moment we connect any more in there currently uh, these will be sitting at one two three four five six seven eight uh, the moment we add anything else in there, now we'll complain is too many components connected, especially when we add all the redstone stuff in. So you can add, make what's called a relay, and what this does is it prevents this guy from seeing the components on the other side of the network. So if we place it for, say, maybe here. Now it can be placed into a cable. Or it can be placed into. Now that's not going to work very well, is it? Might have to take that off. Let's move the X in around a little bit. Uh, where's the X net? This guy. Look at that. Uh, so. As you can see, it's now taking signals. Every time this guy flashes, it's actually taking a signal in, and it's seeing it taking in from the top and seeing it at the back. Uh, at the back, but now it's preventing this guy from being seen by that. So if we go into here, we can't use this anymore because it's not actually connected to that. And that's fine. I actually want to have a separate monitor anyway for that. This is in for internal stuff, and there'll be a separate monitor for the scoreboard above. Uh, so what we want to do now though, is we want to place some network cables into here. Uh, I did wise I get some there, there we go. So we put those along there. Uh, we'll have to run it down here, I hope we don't run into it. We're very careful what we're doing, so we don't run it into an existing computer. Uh, which should be fine. We can then run th this into here. Uh, we'll place it properly, we'll do a, it's not going to matter too much. Uh, if we go into, let's put the RAM and the components and everything in there. Um, network card, we will need our EEPROM later. And I thought I'd made a CPU. Okay, I'll have to make a CPU later. I'm sure I made one, but I can't see it there. That's fine. Uh, what we can do though is uh, I just put that thing in there. I can't do it. For now, let's take this back out for a second because I need to use this monitor. Uh, there we go. And if it should keep running, cool. Take out the existing EEPROM from here and stick out blank one into here. And have I copied my script across? No, I haven't. Let me just do that now. So now we have our file called figure.lua, which is the basically what I'm going to use for my boot script. And if we go flash figure.lua, it'll say to insert the EEPROM, which we've done already. When you're ready, pr press Y to continue. We press Y. It'll now copy that file onto the EEPROM. And we can call this FIELA. And it's done. So now we can take, if we go up to back up to here, where our EEPROM is, we can take this guy out and put the original guy in. So when it boots, it'll boot off its original one. And now, the new guy, which will be here, 
can have Feeler inserted in there, and the code will boot up. So as I said, I'm going to have to go and make this CPU so this machine will boot, which I thought I'd already done. Um, and I will be back once that's done. Okay, so I did make the CPU. I just put it back to the storage rather than putting my inventory. Don't know why I did that, but anyway, we could put that in there. Um, and if we turn this on, it should boot up. Now you'll see I've also connected up all the redstone IOs, and you can hear in the background it's beeping. Cool, that sounded like we got everything. Should be nine beeps, um, each frequency indicating it's found another device. That's my code just telling me that it's actually working. And I've also got some debugging in here. You can see I've got the redstone on the ground here to indicate which number it is because it does need to be in order to be able to match it upstairs. What I need to do now though is connect up the conduits here to the bottom pieces and then I'll come back and hopefully at that point we should just about be done. So I will catch you in a moment. Okay, so that's all of the redstone IO blocks in and connected. It looks like Spaghetti Mountain down here. But it, everything does connect up quite a complex little way of doing it, like the, the bottom block here and the top block are this row, and this row is going on on both sides, and that's allowing of course for two rows to be put into one block, otherwise it would hit into the too many components issue. Uh, the redstone, as you can see, is all set up correctly now, so that this block here is block one, this block here is block two, block three, block four, block five, and block six. And that's just to give an idea on where this block should be. Um, because of course, if block 1 is actually over here, then the positioning is incorrect. But, since all that's set up, and one thing I'm really annoyed about, is cell mufflers don't work. That's just a pain. Uh, but if we go up to here, we can now go in through this door. Uh, and we can run around and collect up the dots. Which means it's Pac-Man. Uh, it does seem a little laggy. I don't know if it seems laggy to you. It seems laggy to me. And if I run along here, it does take a while for it to update. Not that you can see that, but you'll see if I turn around. Oops. If I turn around. It's still there. Uh, there you go, finally catching up. So I don't know what's causing that. I had a quick play with the code and it looks like we need to send a network signal via the modems. It take a while to catch up. Um, because if I don't send the modem signal, then it's really quick. So I'm going to have a play with between episodes, trying to speed this up a little bit and put an end condition in. Because currently this, all you do is click dots and that's it. There's no nothing to it. I was thinking probably the easiest way to do it would be to have it make it timed. Um, it's not going to be like Pac-Man, the original Pac-Man type gamers because it's, I don't have the ghosts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. It's not quite finished, but unfortunately I don't know. I've spent so much time trying to work out a way that is speedy enough to get the dots to disappear and the motion sensors working that unfortunately I can't finish it. Um, if you've got any thoughts on how to make it faster or to not require such a complex bit of redstone, then please let me know down in the comments because I'm quite happy to fix it up and then of course everybody can come play it. When this is down it also automatically shuts down the computers. Um, so I'm going to have to find a way of automatically turning them on when someone comes into range. But I think as I said, on the end episode here, if you've enjoyed the episode or learning from it, we have done quite a bit of open computer stuff in this episode, then please do leave a like. If you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, or as I said, you can think of another way of fixing the redstone issue or speeding it up, leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!